I'm Michael Santos with Prism Professors, and I'm really enthusiastic about being able to provide more educational materials for people in jails and prisons across America. Recently, thanks to uh, support from a friend of mine, we've been able to develop a relationship with Binance, which is the world's largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Um, it's just an incredible business that you can see here. If I go to Binance right here, um, you can actually see how it's grown to um, this is the their their site here that has more than 200 million users it's a place where people can buy and hold cryptocurrencies it's a place where people can learn about cryptocurrencies and because i'm somebody who served a long time in prison and wanted to help more people understand the digital economy i reached out to the founder with whom i've developed a um, a friendship and and asked if he could coordinate it so that we could take the Binance educational material and bring it inside to jails and prisons through our nonprofit. And that is the origins of this agreement that I was showing you here before, that, that they authorized us to use all of their content strictly for educational um, reasons, and we would be able to publish it on our website, we'd be able to publish it on our YouTube channel, social channels, on the Adovo platform, but most importantly, we would be able to distribute it free of charge to the hundreds of thousands of people that we reach in jails and prisons across America. Now, why is it so important in my view to help people in prison understand the digital economy and artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency and um, Web 3.0? It's because the world is really advancing. And when our country blocks people in prison from being able to educate themselves or learn, we put them at a disadvantage of being able to succeed upon release. And I, I just have, I've, for those of you who've gone through my courses already, you know I frequently tell this story of when my f wife first gave me an iPhone and I put it to my ear and thought it was broken because it didn't have a dial tone. I was so disconnected after having been in prison for 26 years that I knew I needed to learn more and I wanted to learn more. But the prison system d didn't provide access to the internet. So I'd have to learn by reading. I'd have to learn by just uh, trying to gather what I could from people who came into the prison and, and, and would teach me. But I didn't get to learn. There was a lot of stuff I didn't get to learn. And, and so when I came home, it became very important for me to try and develop courses that we could use to disseminate inside jails and prisons across the country. And we're really grateful that we're now um, have relationships with different prison agencies, whether it's the California Department of Corrections, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, or hundreds of other institutions through our relationship with the Adovo Foundation. And we produce these prison professors courses strictly to help people understand you might not be able to uh, participate in the digital economy today, but you could absolutely learn. And, and so with this new agreement with Binance, what we're going to be able to do is go into these different courses that they make available right on their website, and I want to explain them. So I'm just going to read some of these. Sometimes I will play the videos that are right here on the Binance um, channel and, and give an explanation. But because we, we send these, in, these courses into prison on things like uh, DVDs that look like this, or uh, in courses that we create and, and load up directly into the prison educational system, I am going to take the time to read them because I want people to, to be able to improve their reading skills, their comprehension skills, and I can also provide a little bit of analysis while I am reading the course. So these are supposed to be self-directed courses. They are always going to be a part of our program. We will produce them in ways so that we can get into prisons as part of our preparing for success after prison course. Because although people don't have access to the internet, we can absolutely produce this content in workbooks and send it into jails and prisons right through the mail. And uh, that's the way that we get all these letters, <laughs> you know, thousands of letters every week from people in jails and prisons across America. And what are they asking? They're wanting to learn more. And that's what we want to offer. We want to offer free content to anybody who wants to invest the time to learn themselves. So let me read this first course, which would have been really helpful to me while I was in prison. I've learned a lot about uh, cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance since I've come home. 
but while I was inside, I was um, I didn't have access to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video, and then I will go ahead and read the lesson. So let's start with the video, which is professional grade, and you will be able to learn directly from Binance. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a digital asset that was designed to be used as a medium of exchange within a peer-to-peer -peer network. It was originally introduced in late 2008 by a person or a group using the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency to ever be created and it makes use of cryptographic techniques to verify and secure transactions and to regulate the issuance of additional coins. Bitcoin transactions are verified by a decentralized network of nodes and if confirmed to be valid, they are recorded into a public distributed ledger called blockchain. The Bitcoin network is operated by an underlying set of rules known as the Bitcoin protocol. This protocol defines, among other things, the issuance of new coins. The maximum supply of Bitcoin is 21 million and according to estimates, the last Bitcoin will be mined around the year 2140. The Bitcoin network relies on a process known as mining, which can be broken down into five basic steps. New transactions are broadcasted to the distributed network of nodes. The mining nodes gather new transactions into a candidate block. Each miner works on finding a valid solution to his own block in order to produce a block hash. The block hash proves that the miner did the required work, hence proof of work. The first mining node to find a valid solution broadcasts his block to the other nodes on the network. If the nodes reach consensus and the block is confirmed as valid, it is added into the blockchain. The process starts over as mining nodes begin to work on the next block. Every new block uses the block hash of the previously validated block. Blocks are linked and secured by cryptographic proofs, and this creates a chain of blocks. Blockchain. Let's take a closer look at some of the features on the Bitcoin protocol. A transaction is a transfer of Bitcoin value between its users. When making a transaction, you are essentially referencing to previous transactions received to your account, proving that you are allowed to spend the value you are sending. This means that transactions can have several different inputs to make up the value to be transferred. In a case where the total coin value of the output is higher than the payment a user wants to make, the Bitcoin protocol will send the difference, the change, back to you. The proof of work consensus algorithm is what allows the Bitcoin network to be both decentralized and fault tolerant. The network is maintained by the collective work of distributed nodes, which have to regularly reach consensus in regards to the real state of the blockchain. Proof of work was implemented as a core component of the Bitcoin protocol, and it is essential in the process of mining, which is responsible for generating new blocks and maintaining the network secure. Mining nodes needs to try and guess a pseudo-random number, nonce that when combined with the data provided in the block and passed through a hash function will produce a result that matches given conditions, for example a hash starting with four zeros. The first miner to discover a valid nonce receives the block reward with a certain amount of BTC. Privacy and security. Bitcoin is considered a Byzantine Fault Tolerant System BFT, and its protocol includes several features that makes the network highly resistant to attacks. The mining process ensures the security of the network, and by implementing the proof-of-work consensus algorithm, Satoshi managed to solve the double spending problem. Modifying the Bitcoin blockchain requires the entire structure to be unraveled block by block. This is almost impossible even for the most powerful computers. All transactions in the Bitcoin network are irreversible unless a 51% attack is successfully deployed. Such an attack would require a person or entity to control more than half of the total network power in order to reverse the confirmed blocks. Therefore, the potential rewards of a 51% attack are much smaller than the costs, as it would require a lot of computational power and a lot of time to perform the calculations. To learn more about cryptocurrencies and the technologies behind them, check out our other videos on Binance Academy. So that's where that is really valuable information. 
um, to somebody who is really just becoming familiar with the Bitcoin protocol and Bitcoin currency. I began investing in Bitcoin much later than I would have if I had learned more about this technology much earlier in my journey. But you can start learning. Remember, there's, there's, there's a theory here at Prism Professors that it's never too early and it's never too late to begin sowing seeds that will help you prepare for a better future, regardless of what you're going through right now. You might be at the start of your prison journey. You might be in the middle of your prison journey. You might be at the end of your prison journey. But one thing you can do is start to invest in yourself. And the best way to invest in yourself, in my view, is to develop knowledge. And the more you learn about how the world is changing and how you could participate in a changing world, the better off you're going to be. So let me get let me read now for those of you who are in a jail watching this video. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and share the screen and read the the actual lesson that uh, and, and I'll provide some commentary for it along the way with hopes of helping you learn. So this is a little symbol here that says TLDR. My understanding of what TLDR means is it's too long and did not read. Well, we're going to go ahead and read it for you just with hopes of helping you understand because it's like learning a new language for those of you who have never been exposed to cryptocurrencies before. But Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that operates on a decentralized database called the blockchain. We just saw the video of what that is. The transactions on the Bitcoin network are recorded on a public ledger and verified by a network of nodes located worldwide. Bitcoin is transparent and permissionless making it a popular alternative to traditional finance systems. So what is a Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a digital form of cash, but unlike the government issued fiat currencies, now you just learned a word perhaps, fiat currency, that's the dollar, um, the US, or a government, um, a government distributed currency, like the US dollar here in the United States. If you're in Mexico, it's the peso. If you're in uh, England, it's the British pound. But those are fiat currencies. They're not decentralized, meaning they are um, controlled by the government. So unlike government-issued fiat currencies, you're used to no central bank controls it. Okay, In fiat currencies, there's a central bank, and that's what controls the dollar. You've heard about things like inflation. They manipulate inflation. The governments manipulate inflation by printing more dollars, which effectively devalues the dollars currently in existence. With Bitcoin, that can't happen because it's a decentralized finance. Instead, the financial system in Bitcoin is run by thousands of computers distributed around the world. Anyone can participate in the ecosystem by downloading Bitcoin's open source software. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency announced in 2008 and launched in 2009. It allows users to send and receive digital money called bitcoins with a lowercase b or btc what makes it highly appealing is its inherent resistance to censorship the impossibility of double spending funds and the ability to conduct transactions anytime and anywhere what makes bitcoin unique well here are a few of the key features that make bitcoin unique one decentralization Bitcoin operates on a decentralized public blockchain, meaning a central authority doesn't control it. Instead, transactions are verified by the network of computers known as nodes. In addition, anyone can join the network and help secure it. Permissionless. Bitcoin's permissionless nature means that anyone with an internet connection can participate in the Bitcoin network without authorization or permission from a central nor authority. One thing I'll ask you to notice is there's a difference between Bitcoin with a capital B and Bitcoin with a lowercase b. This is the Bitcoin network. It's the entire system. Whereas if we're just talking about Bitcoin, which is a digital currency, it's lowercase. Bitcoin now allows users to send and receive payments with anyone on the network, regardless of location or identity. This has made Bitcoin particularly popular in regions where access to traditional financial systems is limited or non-existent. Limited supply. 
Bitcoin supply of 20 Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million coins hard coded into the protocol. This means there will never be more than 21 million bitcoins in circulation, which help which helps to prevent inflation. 4. Transparency. All bitcoin transactions are recorded on a public ledger that is visible to all users. That is, this means that anyone can see the transactions that have taken place, including the amount of Bitcoin involved and the addresses of the sender and the receiver. In traditional financial systems, transactions are recorded by banks and other financial institutions. And this information is not generally available to the public. Instead, people rely on these institutions to keep accurate records. That's the big difference, one of the big difference between Bitcoin and fiat currency, because there's, there's a limited amount of supply, only 21 million shares, and everything is public and transparent. You can't have some arbitrary decision to create more Bitcoins. Divisibility. Bitcoin can be divided into smaller units called Satoshis, which are 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. This means that even if the price of a Bitcoin becomes very high, people can still use and transact with very small amounts of the currency. This makes Bitcoins more accessible to people with limited financial resources and allows for more granular transactions. How does Bitcoin work? When Alice makes a transaction with Bob, she is not sending money in the way you might expect. It's not like the digital equivalent of handing him a dollar bill. It is more like she's writing on a piece of paper that everyone can see that she's giving Bob a dollar. When Bob goes to send the same funds to Carol, she can see that Bob has them by looking at the sheet of paper. So like here is a digital ledger. Alice gives a, a Bitcoin to Bob. Carol gives a Bitcoin to Bob. Dan gives a Bitcoin to Alice. Carol gives Aaron a Bitcoin. Frank gives Carol a Bitcoin. Aaron gives Dan a Bitcoin. Frank gives Carol a Bitcoin, or these are percentages of Bitcoins, but these are just ledgers of what happened. So the sheet becomes a database called a blockchain. All network participants have an identical copy of it stored on their devices. The participants connect with each other to synchronize new information. To maintain the security and integrity of the blockchain, Bitcoin uses a consensus mechanism known as proof of work also seen as capital P, lowercase o, uppercase w. When a user makes a payment, they broadcast it to the network where it is verified by other nodes known as miners. These miners compete to solve a complex mathematical puzzle and must devote computing power to do so. The first miner to solve the puzzle gets to add a new block of transactions to the blockchain. As an incentive, there is a reward available for whoever proposes a valid block. The reward, often referred to as a block reward, is made up of a two components, transaction fees from the transactions within the block and the block subsidy. The block fee is the only source of fresh bitcoins. With each block mined, it adds a certain amount of coins to the total of supply. <coughs> Bitcoin's proof-of-work consensus mechanism is designed to make it expensive to create a block, but cheap to verify that it's valid. Suppose someone tries to cheat with an invalid block. In that case, where am I? I lost my place. Suppose someone tries to cheat with an invalid block. In that case, the network immediately rejects it and the miner is unable to recoup the cost of mining. But what is Bitcoin used for? Bitcoin is primarily used as a digital currency and store of value. It can be used to make purchases online or in person, just like traditional currencies. Anyone with an internet connection can send and receive it, and its digital presence means that it can be transferred globally. Bitcoin is sometimes used for more private transactions. The transactions are public, and the addresses are pseudonymous, though not completely anonymous. 
So that's an interesting concept there. Let's explore that for those of you who are kind of learning this with me. The transactions are public and the addresses have public keys. So it's like you might give somebody uh, the, the account number for your bank account. That's public. You can give that to them. You can put so they can put something in there, but they can't take anything out. Still, it's not completely anonymous <coughs> because while the transactions are visible on the blockchain, the user behind them are not easily identifiable. Some people also, you also buy Bitcoins as a long-term investment, expecting their value to increase over time. I, I've been purchasing Bitcoins because that's one of the things that I expect. I expect them to increase in value over time. Like gold or other commodities, Bitcoin's limited supply and decentralized nature have made it a viable option for investors looking to diversify their portfolios. A history of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was first introduced in 2008 when Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper entitled Bitcoin, a Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System. This white paper introduced a new digital currency that would operate on a decentralized system without relying on governments or the banking system. In January 2009, the Bitcoin protocol was released and the first Bitcoin transaction took place between Satoshi Nakamoto and a programmer named Hal Finney. The transaction involved sending 10 Bitcoins from Nakamoto to Finney. After the first transaction, more people began to discover Bitcoin and joined the network. The digital currency gained popularity among a small community of tech enthusiasts by demonstrating that Bitcoin could function without a central authority or intermediary. And then there's a famous story of the Bitcoin pizza. It's an important milestone in the history of Bitcoin as it marked the first time Bitcoins were used as a medium of exchange for a real world transaction. On May 22, 2010, a programmer named Laszlo Haniex made history by using 10,000 bitcoins to buy two pizzas. The transaction became known as Bitcoin Pizza Day and is now commemorated every year on May 22. Who created Bitcoin? Satoshi Nakamoto's identity remains a mystery. Satoshi could be a person or a group of developers anywhere in the world. The name is of Japanese origin, but Satoshi's mastery of English has led many to believe that he or she is from an English-speaking country. Did Satoshi invent blockchain technology? Bitcoin combines a number of existing technologies that have been around for a long time, and this includes blockchain technology. The use of such immutable data structures can be traced back to the early 1990s when Stuart Haber and W. Scott Stornetta proposed a system for time stamping documents. Much like today's blockchains, it relied on cryptographic techniques to secure data and prevent it from being tampered with. How many bitcoins are there? The protocol sets the maximum supply of bitcoins at 21 million coins. As of 2023, just over 90% of these have been mined, but it will take over 100 years to produce the rest. This is due to a periodic events known as halving, which gradually reduce the mining reward. What is Bitcoin halving? Bitcoin's halving is a process that reduces the rate at which new Bitcoin blocks are created. Specifically, it refers to the periodic halving events that reduce the block rewards offered to miners. The next Bitcoin halving is expected to happen in 2024, roughly four years after the last halving, which took place in May 2020. Now, for those of you who are new to this channel, I'm reading this uh, particular lesson on June the 10th, uh, 2024, and we've already had the halving event. It took place around April the 20th, uh, 2024, so a couple of months ago. So the next halving event won't take place for about four more years in 2028 and I'll be sharing more with this in future lessons as well. So uh, let's continue. Bitcoin having is at the core of its economic model a, a, as it ensures that coins are issued at a steady pace getting increasingly difficult at a predictable rate. Such a controlled rate of monetary inflation is one of the key differences between cryptocurrency and traditional fiat currencies which have an essential 
essentially infinite supply. Is Bitcoin safe? One of the main risks associated with Bitcoin is the potential for hacking and theft. For example, in phishing scams, hackers use social engineering techniques to trick users into revealing their login credentials or private keys. Once the hacker has access to the user's account or crypto wallet, they can transfer the victim's Bitcoin, the transfer the victim's Bitcoins to their own wallet. Another way hackers can steal Bitcoins is through malware or ransomware attacks. Hackers can infect a user's computer or mobile device with malware that allows them to access the user's Bitcoin wallet. In some cases, hackers can also use ransomware to encrypt a user's files and demand payment in Bitcoins to unlock them. Because Bitcoin transactions are irreversible and not insured by any government agency, Users must take precautions to protect their Bitcoin holdings. This includes using strong passwords, two-factor authentication, and storing Bitcoins in a secure crypto wallet that is inaccessible to hackers. It is also important to only download Bitcoin-related software from trusted sources. Another risk associated with Bitcoin is price volatility. The value of Bitcoin can fluctuate highly over short periods of time making it a risky investment for those who are not prepared for the potential losses. Closing thoughts. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency that has gained significant attention in recent years. It was created to provide an alternative to traditional financial systems and operates on a peer-to-peer -peer network, allowing users to send and receive payments without intermediaries. While Bitcoin is still a relatively new technology, it is already revolutionizing the way we think about money. As Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies continue to evolve, it will be interesting to see if they become a part of our everyday lives. So that is our first lesson here, thanks to Binance for providing us with this information that we can share through our nonprofit to people in jails and prisons. It's our mission to help people inside recognize You've got to invest in yourself so that you could put yourself in a position to prosper and succeed on the other side of the journey, regardless of what opportunities um, or, or obstacles you face while you're in prison. I did 26 years in prison. My name is Michael Santos. I'm the founder of PrisonProfessors.com. I'm a cryptocurrency enthusiast and investor, and I never ask anyone to do anything that I didn't do. By learning about technology, learning a de to develop communication skills, I opened opportunities to prosper when I got out, and that's what we want for you. My name is Michael Santos, and I believe in you. And I hope that you will work through all of our coursework so that you can advance pros possibilities and prospects for your success upon release. Again, I want to give thanks to Binance uh, for giving us access to this information. Thank you.